Welcome to Unit 7, Video 5, Periodic Trends. By the end of this video, you should understand the properties of ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity. You should be able to differentiate between first ionization energy and subsequent ionization energies. You should be able to identify the period and group trends for first ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity. And you should be able to explain those trends in terms of atomic structure. It turns out that since the periodic table corresponds to, in its arrangement to electron configuration, and because electron configuration determines properties, the elements on the periodic table also show trends or patterns in their properties. These properties are said to exhibit periodicity or periodic trends. Some properties that exhibit periodicity are metallic character, how metallic something is, atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. We'll be talking about a few of these in this video, but not all. Let's start with first ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in its gas phase. You can also think about this as how strongly an atom holds on to its electrons since electrons that are held more strongly will require more energy to remove them from the atom. For example, in order to remove the first electron from lithium, in this case the first electron is the one farthest away from the nucleus, it will require 8.64 times 10 to the negative ninth joules for every atom. Likewise, it requires 520 kilojoules to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of lithium atoms. So this is the amount of energy it takes to get this guy, this last electron right here, to leave the atom to give us an Li plus ion. If we graph the first ionization energy of the elements, we get a graph that looks like this. Let's try to identify some trends. Looking first at the group trend, Let's ident identify some groups. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon are a group. They're group 18 of the periodic table. Notice as we go down the group from neon, from helium to neon to argon to krypton to xenon, our ionization energy decreases as we go down the group. Looking now at periods, each of these pieces here represent going across a period. This is period 1, period 2, period 3, period 4, and so on. Notice as, the, as we go across a period, ionization energy increases. So to summarize, the trend for ionization energy is that it decreases down a group. Why is this? Well, as we go down a group, recall that we're adding more and more energy levels, more and more principal energy levels to the atom. Therefore, the electrons are getting further and further away from the nucleus. If this is my nucleus here, as we go down a group, I'm adding more and more principal energy levels. You can think of these as rings. So the electrons are getting further and further away from the nucleus. That means they're being pulled on less by the positive nucleus, so it requires less energy to get them to leave the atom. Going across a period, however, ionization energy increases. This might seem confusing, but consider again, as we go across a period, if this is our nucleus, we're not adding any additional rings. We're just adding electrons to the same energy level. They're not getting any further away but the nucleus is getting more and more positive because it's getting more and more electrons as you go across the period. Therefore, the nucleus becomes more positive and more able to pull on the electrons, making it require more energy to remove them. Here's a picture summarizing these trends. We can also talk about successive ionization energy. If first ionization energy is the energy required to remove the first electron from an atom, second ionization energy is the energy required to remove the second after the first has been removed, and so on and so forth. Here are the three ionization energies for a lithium atom. 
here we see that the first ionization energy, the energy required to remove that first electron, is quite small as compared to the second and the third. Notice there's a significant jump from the first to the second, especially when you compare the jump between the second and third, which is much smaller. It requires far more energy to remove the second and third electrons, since they're a whole principal energy level closer to the nucleus. Notice, however, it does require less to remove the second than it does to remove the third. That's because when we're removing the second electron, there's another electron, the third electron, that's repelling it. So it's kind of giving it a little help out of the atom. Once that's gone, there's no more electrons to repel that last electron. So that takes the most energy to remove. Here's a chart showing some successive ionization energies for several elements. Notice the yellow or orange box there represents where we make the jump from one principal energy level to the next. Notice that in each case, there's a significant jump between the ionization energy before and the ionization energy after we've jumped to the next principal energy level. The next property is atomic radius. Atomic radius is the distance from the nucleus to the edge of the electron cloud. Atomic radius increases down a group. This is not surprising. Recall that as we go down a group, if this is our nucleus, each time we go from one element to the next, we add a principal energy level. So the atom is literally getting larger. Its radius is increasing. What's a little more surprising, however, is the trend across a period. It turns out that atomic radius decreases across a period. Again, recall that as we go across a period, let's say period three, so we have three principal energy levels. As we go across period three, we don't actually add any energy levels. We simply add electrons to the same energy level. So the electrons aren't getting any further away from the nucleus, but the nucleus is getting more and more and more positive as we go across because the number of protons is increasing. Therefore, we have additional pull from the nucleus without the electrons getting any further away. This actually serves to bring the whole atom or the whole electron cloud closer to the nucleus, decreasing the atomic radius. Here's a summary of this trend. Here's a, a visual representation of a couple of elements. Notice again, the atomic size is decreasing across the period, but increasing down the group. You'll also notice that this trend corresponds to ionization energy. As you go down a group and the radius increases, the electrons get further away, making ionization energy decrease. Likewise, as you go across a period and the atomic radius decreases, ionization energy will increase because the electrons are getting closer and closer to the nucleus, making them more difficult to remove. Finally, we have electronegativity, which is the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons to itself. We measure electronegativity using the Pauli electronegativity scale, which was developed by Linus Pauling. It has no units because these are relative values. The trend is that electronegativity increases across a period and decreases down a group. Again, as we go across a period, since the nucleus is getting more and more positive, the nucleus is more and more able to attract electrons to itself. As we go down a group, the uh, nucleus is getting more and more positive, but the electrons are getting further away, so the nucleus is less able to attract the electrons to itself. Here's a visual representation of uh, the electronegativity trend. Notice again, electronegativity is increasing as you go across a period and decreasing as you go down a group. And that's a picture of Linus, my dog, who is warmly named after Linus Pauling, developer of the electronegativity scale. Here's a summary of the three properties we talked about in this video. You should notice that atomic radius corresponds to ionization energy and electronegativity. 
because as atomic radius decreases, electrons come closer to the nucleus, causing ionization energy and electronegativity to increase, and vice versa. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the properties of ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity and defined them. Then, we differentiated between first ionization energy, the energy required to remove the first electron, and subsequent ionization energies, or the energies required to remove subsequent electrons. Then, we identified period and group trends for first ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity, and we explained the trends uh, listed above in terms of atomic structure.